please welcome the lovely Emily Blunt. Oh, oh, the sweetest thing. Oh, oh the sweetest thing. Great dress you got on that. Oh, I'm a bit worried it's a bit short. You can see the top Don't of my tights. Don't ever but... worry about a dress being too short. Now, <laughs> just flown in from uh, Los Angeles to be with us, yes. I believe. And happy birthday. It was your birthday this week. It was on Monday, yeah. Wow, 42. What a I lovely... Know. What a mar... I know. <laughs> it's had a bit of work done, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you go to LA for. <laughs> just a little bit. Now, how old are you? How old were you this year? 26. Wow, well, congratulations. What Thank exciting... you. I remember when I was 26. What, what were those days like? They were very similar to the way they are today. <laughs> That's a worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just no petrol. We were steam driven. Um, <laughs> okay, Devil Wears Prada. Yes. Uh, I loved that movie. I didn't think I would necessarily. I, I loved it. It Good. was a tremendous, uh, fun movie. I've watched it with my kids any number of times. Um, now, you, you played uh, the assistant to the woman who edits a magazine rather like Vogue, yes. which is based on a woman in real life uh, who is somewhat scary, I believe. Um, <laughs> yes. yeah. Did you get to meet her? Did you do much research for the part? Did you get to hang out at the magazine? I didn't actually hang out at the magazine. I actually went to this sort of fashion event called the Met Ball, which I was really dreading, and um, I wasn't aware that Anna Winter was in charge of it. Well, there she is. You can see she's a nice, jokey person to hang out <laughs> with. Very relaxed and yeah. calm. Um, and, so and I had to kind of... There was a big queue going in. I was like, oh, this is awful. Why is there such a long queue? And then I, I turned the corner and I realised we had to shake hands with Anna Winter, and oh. it was just like, oh, my God, this is going to be awful. And I'd heard that she was upset about the film being made, and felt it was a bit of a betrayal by the woman who'd written it and so I walked up to meet her and and she did one of those like handshakes where you shove the hand so away she was like hello and then shoved Ooh, it pushed it back and I was like all right see you later uh, what about the uh, making the movie itself though because it was it seemed to me and I don't know it seems like it's a fairly accurate portrayal of that world um that's what people tell me I mean I think it is that sort of awful and incestuous and competitive. But at the same time, you can see why people love it, because if you like clothes, if you like fashion, you would want to be there. It feels like you're in the centre of it all. Well, you would. I mean, but I, I, mean, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to work in an office where you can't eat your bagel. No, I wouldn't want to either. Did you, uh, did you get to keep any of the clothes? <laughs> did you get to keep any of the gear from the... I the didn't. Shop? It's a real sore point, because Meryl decided to auction them all off. So Mel So too. that was nice. No, obviously she... it was for charity. So. <laughs> 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 still are. <laughs> uh, but but I did steal a belt. Well, that's nice. So you stole a belt from charity. <laughs> charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, she's fantastic in the film, she of is, course. Yeah. Uh, and it must be daunting, I'm sure, for any young actress to go in and know you're working with Streep. Yeah. Did she put you at ease? Is she relaxed with you? She met us at the read-through and she was really nice and really supportive and laughed at my first line, which I appreciated. And then um, afterwards she took Annie and I aside and she said, you know, I'm really happy that you guys are in the movie and I think you're going to be really good. Um, and that's the last nice thing I'm going to say to you. <laughs> and it really was. Like, that was it. And so when we got to set, it was, she was quite frosty. So she stayed in character then? A little bit. I mean, it wasn't that we couldn't approach her, but she was quite reserved. I think she hated playing her, to be honest. Really? Why so? Yeah, because I think that she felt she was rather soulless, sort of boring. Oh, but she does a great, it's a great performance. She does performance. a good dragon. But I can imagine, you know, when you meet someone who you've, you know, you've admired for years, it is intimidating. I mean, mm. when Clive came in this evening and met me, he was, you could see he was a little bit... Clive is quaking back yeah, there. Yeah, he was, you know, <laughs> I'm something of a role model to that young man. Um, <laughs> okay, let's talk about your new. Well, no, before we talk about your new movie, let's talk about the movie made with Tom Hanks because I met Emily and interviewed oh. her very briefly for the film show I do for the BBC, and you were just about to go off and shoot Charlie Wilson's War with Tom Hanks and take my clothes off. Yeah, yeah. it's not a huge part, but you were nervous about it because <laughs> yes. um, it, you had to be semi-naked or yes. nearly naked with him. Yeah, which is mortifying, obviously, having to do any of those scenes. But um, I mean, I, it was distracting doing it with someone like Tom Hanks, who I've grown up watching and. All I could think of was like splash and big and oh no, I didn't say that. You don't have to think of that. <laughs> oh god. You're naked with Tom Hanks thinking about splash and big. <laughs> Did you tell him that? No, I veered off that on the day. <laughs> oh god. Um, but what, uh, and how does he? Does he put you at your ease there? He was so cool. He was such a gentleman yeah. and um, just made it very easy for me. I mean, it's always embarrassing. There's always it, some unnecessary crew guy lurking around. But it's a weird part of your, your business, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is strange. I mean, it's never going to be comfortable. It's always quite clinical. I mean, yeah. there's always someone gagging for their lunch break in the middle of your love scene. <laughs> so. Well, let's have a look at a clip. This is you in action. Don't worry, we don't show the, the nudie bit. But do they ever... Is this Charlie Wilson? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Really? Do they ever, yeah. Do they ever, though, um, shoot more than they should? I mean, do you have in the contract how much they're allowed to see? You know, like... 
well, one I breast and a little I did, bit of thigh. I was surprised or... when there was a close up of my bum in it, so I was so really, surprised so that by that when I You hadn't it. said you could shoot from behind. <laughs> That's a legitimate cinematic question. Oh, no. That is a legitimate term. No, I hadn't said that would be okay, no. Let's <laughs> have a look, there's a bit of toilet as well. Oh, no. <laughs> it's hotter here in DC than in Nacogdoches. So I hope you don't mind. I took off a few of my clothes. Well, I'm just gonna have to live with that, Jane. Just call me angel of the morning, angel. Just touch my cheek before you leave. Come on out here. I'm gonna show you the best view in the district. You want some of this? No, no, I got this. I like both. It must be great being me. <laughs> I've heard it is. <laughs> Evil Jimmy Memorial is the Lincoln, me. Washington, and forward around to the right. Jefferson Memorial, the Arlington Bridge, and there's the Pentagon. Oh, that's the Pentagon. That's the Pentagon. I thought I'd show you the second best view in the district. What, Jay? Would you like? <laughs> and that was predictable. Just give me one second. Mm -hmm. Cut, cut. That's his mum on the phone, uh, spoiling his phone. Yeah, it's my dad. Wow. Actually, it's so, it's so embarrassing watching that. It's so embarrassing because I remember um, this song where I'm supposed to be coming down the stairs. Originally, it was going to be, I'm a joker, I'm a donna. Yeah. And I was like, I can do that. That's in my range. And then yeah. when Mike Nichols had the idea to do Angel of the Morning, when I heard it, you can hear how high it is. I sound like a canary. And like, so the option was to do, just call me Angel, or like to do it, just call me Angel. I didn't know which one was sexier, so I went for yeah. the... Neither of the way you <laughs> just did it there. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one. <laughs> now, I saw uh, a preview of your new movie, Young Victoria, which right. is out in March, I saw yesterday, uh, and I adored it. Oh, I, good. I, I loved it. I didn't know there would. It's a period thing, and sometimes it's easy to get that kind of thing wrong. But a fascinating story as well. And the story, the idea for the film, comes from quite an unusual source, doesn't it? Who, who was it who first suggested they make this movie? Uh, it was the Duchess of York, Sarah so Ferguson. So it was Sarah Ferguson, mm -hmm. Fergie, not Fergie, Fergie. from Black Eyed Peas, Fergie from <laughs> yeah. uh, Ex of the Royal Family. Yeah. So she must have, you know, read up on, on the young Victorian. Well, movies. I think she, it was her idea, and then she brought it to Graham King, and, um, and then Julian Fellows just ran with it, and he's a historical buff, so. Yeah. And did they, was it the usual audition process, or did you get invited in for this I mean, one? it was, um, I think I found out about it early on from my pushy agent. So I went to meet them, and, and I rarely do kind of an impassioned plea for something, but I really wanted to do this, so. Um, and was that because you'd already read the script, or you should Yeah, I'd read the script, and, and I knew that I was probably the elimination process for someone bigger. <laughs> yeah, but it's a <laughs> like, Well, this is kind of, in a way, your first lead, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And is that tricky when you go in knowing that you're essentially carrying the movie? Um, I did find that frightening and daunting, and I felt the kind of pressure of responsibility that comes with that. But, um, and I, was, but I, was more, I more just fell in love with her and everything that I read about her, and she was so fascinating. I think the preconception of her is that she's this old repressed sour face cow with a hanky on her head Walking around she with was... a black frock with a hanky on yeah, look, <laughs> yeah well, there so... you go there. but what a what a remarkable life i mean i and and presumably historically it's all accurate i mean the thing it about is her... i mean i mean she actually did lead this very lonely closeted childhood where she wasn't allowed friends or she had to walk downstairs with someone holding her hand Always she slept in the same room a... as her mom was that in case she slipped and fell in and... case she slipped yeah. so the next in line of time would have gone what would've a weird gone. upbringing so it was very lonely i think for her yeah. so it's remarkable she had the resilience to kind of carry through and become Queen and real strength of character, yeah. if we're to believe the movie, to resist other people who wanted to take some of that power Absolutely, from her, at least yeah. early on. Who's that with you? Who's the young fellow with it playing That's the young the Prince Albert? Rupert Friend. Rupert Friend. He's Keira Knightley's uh, young man, I believe. Uh, yes. Uh, he's tremendous in the film. I don't. He's I, brilliant, and he was kind of the only guy who could have played the part. Really. We have a. This is out next Friday. Really, I recommend it wholeheartedly. This is Young Victoria. The park is marvelous. So pleased you like it. I do want you to feel quite at home. I'm sure you're aware why I wished you to come here. Because it would make me happier than anything. Too happy, really, if you would agree to what I wish. And stay with you. And stay with me. And marry you. And marry me. <laughs> Family 
everyone as the young Victoria. That's a lovely scene. Um, I've got to confess, I, I welled up a little bit when she finds love there. I, I was love very, that you did. It's a really lovely romantic story. It's beautifully told, and you carry it brilliantly. I think Thank really, you. I think you, you know, you. Let's as long as you don't make some dodgy movies over the next two years, you'll be fine. I probably have. <laughs> well, your next one, it could be great, could be terrible. Let's wait and see. The Wolfman. Oh yeah. Emily's in you the Wolfman. You had Benicio, didn't you? We had Benicio del Toro. What a great uh, fellow. I loved his company. Good. Uh, and this looks just from that. It's the only still we've got. Just from that, I know I'm going to be queuing to see it. <laughs> no. uh, You've got, you got Anthony Hopkins in a beard there, looking yeah. great, OK? You're all done up in the widow weeds, and then there's Benicio <laughs> with a brilliant hat on. Presumably he is the wolfman, isn't he? Well, he's halfway there, look at him. Ah, and Anthony Hopkins, of course, he's no slouch when it comes to scary movies. Um, <laughs> the first time you've worked with him, is this? It's the first time, and he's such a dream. I followed him around like a bad smell. I didn't leave him alone. And does he do... Uh, I mean, does he... Play, he's quite playful, isn't he? Does he He do is. He's actually an amazing mimic. Um, he can impersonate almost anyone. He was Gielgud and Olivier and all them. And I did ask him to do Hannibal for me. I know why did you ask him to do In the this? makeup chair, we were sitting there and I just went, go on, do it. And he was like, what? I was like, do it. And so he did some, and I can't remember what he said because I almost puked, it was so awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did a bit of that yeah. and, oh, it's terrifying. He just turns it on with the eyes. He's... He just turns it on. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see that. And once again, congratulations on the movie, Thank you. Young Victoria. Lovely to have you on the Thank show. Thank you. You're welcome back anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Emily Blunt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh,